In 2014, Russia triumphantly proclaimed its occupation and annexation of Crimea as the return of the peninsula to its historic motherland. The Kremlin's propaganda line is that Crimea is and has always been part of Russia. This is, of course, a lie. We talk about the annexation more thoroughly in another episode of Honest History, linked below. Crimea has formally been part of Ukraine since 1954, but over a half of the peninsula's population were ethnic Russians. Its indigenous people, the Crimean Tatars, made up only 11%. And as in many parts of the former Soviet Union, the Russian language was widely spoken in Crimea. Many villages and towns in Crimea have Russian names. How did Russians come to Crimea and become the dominant ethnic group? Slavic people, mostly Russians, but also Ukrainians, began to migrate to Crimea in the late 18th century. Imperial Russia annexed Crimea for, for the first time from the Ottoman Empire in 1783. However, the mass resettlement of Russians in Crimea started after it was cleared of its native people, the Crimean Tatars, during World War II. In 1944, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin accused the Crimean Tatars of collaborating with the Nazis. He ordered that they all be deported, along with other small ethnic groups, to Central Asia and Siberia. For decades, the Soviet regime concealed the truth. On May 18, 1944, thousands of Crimean Tatars were boarded onto wooden freight wagons, normally used for transporting cattle, and sent to faraway Uzbekistan as, quote, traitors of the Soviet Union. The Crimean Tatar National Movement estimated that the total number of people deported was around 240,000, almost half of whom were children. The emptied land was quickly populated by Russians and Ukrainians, and in 1954 Crimea became part of Soviet Ukraine. The crime of collective punishment by deportation committed against the Crimean Tatars was excused with lies. In a letter to Stalin from May 10, 1944, the chief of the Soviet secret police, or NKVD, Lavrenti Beria, wrote that the Crimean Tatars had to be deported as punishment for betraying the Soviet people and collaborating with the Nazis. During World War II, Crimea was occupied by the Nazis. Collaboration with the Nazis was common across all of the Nazi-occupied Soviet territories, and it is wrong to judge someone's complicity without a deep understanding of the extreme political and psycho psychological circumstances of wartime. At the same time, thousands of Crimean Tatars fought in the Soviet Red Army and in Soviet partisan movements. For example, the hero of the Soviet Union, pilot Ahmed Khan Sultan, Thousands of Crimean Tatar youths were taken to work to Germany. Soviet history manufactured a heroic myth about the Great Patriotic War, and for years depicted it in monochrome black and white tones, creating an endless variety of stereotypes, historian Gulnara Bikirova wrote. Reiterating the Soviet myth about the betrayal of the Crimean Tatars means justifying the crime of the deportation and the entire repressive policy of Stalin. The Crimean Tatars weren't the only group Stalin suspected or accused of disloyalty. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, Stalin targeted for political repression many smaller ethnic groups, such as Koreans, Estonians, Mitechian Turks, Chechens, and English, to name a few. An estimated 6 million people were deported from their homelands to Central Asia and Siberia. The constant search for, quote, enemies and, quote, anti-Soviet elements was one of the fundamental features of the Soviet totalitarian regime, wrote Bekirova. The punishment for such traitors of the nation was harsh. Not only were the Crimean Tatars banished from their homeland, they were deprived of their identity, language, and culture. For decades, they were registered as Tatars, people from Tatarstan, and were omitted from the Soviet history. Geographical names in Crimea in the Crimean Tatar language were changed to Russian ones. The treason charges against the Crimean Tatar people were cancelled only in 1967, but the ban on returning to their homeland wasn't lifted until 1989. Repatriation wasn't easy either. 
Having returned to their homeland, the Crimean Tatars had to fight for a place to live. When they didn't get land plots, they would begin protesting and seizing them illegally. They would set up campsites and fields and start building houses. Sadly, after their long journey to their homeland, the Crimean Tatars were deprived of it again. In 2014, when Russia occupied Crimea and outlawed the representative body of the Crimean Tatars, the Majlis.